Ready. Awesome. All right. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, we're going to call the order the Housing and Human Welfare Committee meeting. Um, where am I starting? Where am I starting? Um, at at, at roll call. time. Oh. Uh, time is 6.10 p.m. It's Tuesday, September the um, 20th. Um, we'll start with an introduction. Uh, Ald or roll call. Uh, Alderman Tierney. Present. Alderman Shandelmeyer uh, is not here, um, and he's delayed in D.C. with work, um, and myself present. Um, let's move on, on to the next item on the agenda, the approval of the agenda. Um, is there a motion to approve the agenda? Um, I'd like to make a motion for some modifications. Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah, please. Okay. Um, we can do that here. Uh, we're going to defer 040-22 until uh, next, uh, the 29th, okay? Mm -hmm. And then um, the ordinances were, yeah, that, then that's fine. We can do the ordinances next. Okay. So that's cool. Um, so uh, I motion you can second because, right? Yeah. I'll make a second on that. All in, All in favor? <laughs> Aye. Aye. Next item on the agenda, uh, we'll start with our legislation. Uh, is there a motion to Pass 01920, or can you make a motion to? Yeah, let me make a motion uh, to. Uh, we can, um, if it's okay with our, um, if it's okay if we can pass these as a group. Cynthia, that's cool. Okay. Um, so I am making a motion to um, for um, favorable recommendation for. Uh, wait a minute. These were were these the ones? I think last so. Night? Yeah. Yeah. These look like we, this must be a double, yeah. um, because I think these were Approved. actually passed last night. Were they? Yeah, they, or yeah. at least two of them were passed That's last I night. I thought, yeah. Um, well, what harm will it do? Well, yeah, I was ready to say, for the sake of things, just because it's still on the agenda, yeah. let's pass it so yeah. that um, yeah. so, it can be passed by the committee. Yeah, so I'm going to group 019-22, 020-22, 022-22, 023-22, um, three dash twenty two uh, leases for the Anne Arundel workforce, the Luminous Health, uh, Annapolis Arts District, and We Care and Friends at the Stanton Center. Um, I I uh, motion for a favorable recommendation. I'll second that. All in favor? Uh, Aye. Awesome. We got those out of the way. Alrighty. Um, so we'll move on to our next item on the agenda, uh, which is. Oh, actually, you know what we didn't do? <laughs> we didn't approve the amendments. That's oh. my, my, my apologies. Oh, right. yeah. uh, can I make a motion to approve the amendments uh, for our Housing and Human Welfare meeting on 06 22 I, uh, I move that we um, approve the meeting minutes of, of uh, wow, June, June 29th. <laughs> June yeah, I know that was the last time we met. We yep. were off for the we whole off. month of August, so yep. yeah. Yep. Um, all right, so we'll move on to public testimony. That's Are you supposed to say all in favor? So yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. All in favor? Aye. 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 <laughs> we'll now move on to public testimony, the next item on the agenda. Um, let's, before we get started, let, we'll just, you know, a, a summary of, of kind of, right. of what's going on. Um, yeah, frame the discussion. Exactly, as it yeah. relates to housing in the city of Annapolis. Obviously, we understand that. There have been a number of concerns related to um, rental increases and the uh, housing conditions um, and, and properties across the city. Um, and this is an opportunity for for the residents really to voice their concerns. I want to just make a, a, some things crystal clear, and particularly for the property management um, that may be listening. And we will have the property management um, at our meeting on the 29th, which is next week. Uh, because everybody, you know, wants to share their case. But one thing that should be made crystal clear is that there is no room for retaliation. If you give testimony tonight and you are retaliated against in any way, shape, or form by property management or by development groups, et cetera, um, it is not tolerated. You should immediately reach out um, to the uh, our city clerk get in touch with the members of the Housing and Human Welfare Committee, um, and we'll move forward with the best recommendations. Um, I think that everybody just should be aware of that. What you, when you come forward to speak and, and state your case on, um, on what's taking place in your individual unit, um, you know, feel free to be transparent and you know, 
understand that, um, you know, our role more than anything is to assist in protecting you. And so I know that that's been a fear of some residents. And so wanted to make that clear. Uh, also, as it relates to uh, the um, uh, housing authority in the city of Annapolis, I was asked to share um, updates from our meeting. We had an opportunity to meet with the CEO, Melissa Maddox Evans. Um, was it last week? Last when we had Thursday. our last, last Thursday, Thursday okay. Session. Last yeah. Thursday, the city council. So typically, there are um, nine of us, including the mayor, eight older people, one in the mayor. We met in a work session last Thursday, um, and we discussed in detail um, the plans for redevelopment, um, rental concerns, uh, and housing uh, condition concerns across hacker properties. Um, Obviously, I, I still want you to come forward and share your testimony. Um, we're working on the the placard issue um, and the licensing issue. Obviously, that has been a concern for a number of residents. Uh, but you know, we just want to start that with the preface and just saying those things have been uh, discussed. Um, I actually encourage you to go watch the meeting. It wasn't that long. We probably met for about an hour and a half, and it's on Facebook, so you can skip through or, or watch it at your leisure. But please take advantage of that. Uh, so without further ado, let's get started on public testimony. You'll come up to the mic here. Uh, press, make sure that the green button is on. Uh, state your name, address, and um, then you can get started. You got three minutes of public testimony. You'll hear a beep. Once the beep goes, you know, that's just a... a, a, a a courtesy sign to you know wrap things up um and you know afterwards we'll jump into um some just a quick open dialogue and and try to put um put, put some solutions together i think that's the most important thing um so let's get started with public testimony no particular order um first come first serve um and yeah please don't forget to state your name and address and we'll be um and, and it's also recorded just to let you know um, and on you know TV and Facebook and all of that. So, uh, just hit the button in the middle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There you go. So my name is Tony Pratt. I live at 32 Juliana Circle East, and I'm coming as a support to the residents. Um, I'm the owner of People Builder Consultants, and I'm also a community advocate who I advocate for a lot of the residents that you see here. Um, the issues that a lot of them have are really disturbing. Um, a lot of them are really living in humane and deplorable conditions. Um, they've made numerous, um, com I mean, numerous complaints to the maintenance about what's going on in their units. Some of them unanswered. Some of them just come and temporarily paint over mold or, you know, said they're going to come back and don't show up. And the problem continues to the point where we've had to call city inspectors. Some of these units have been declared inhabitable. Some of the residents have been in hotels for in the excess of four weeks. And we have one resident still actually at a hotel, which was a deplorable hotel, which was the extended stay. Um, the mattress had blood on it. It was mold in the unit. She had to be moved to another extended stay. Um, she isn't here today. Her children are facing health problems. A lot of the residents that I've been working with have a lot, a lot of respiratory issues in their family, asthma that they didn't have before moving in those units. Um, we have plumbing issues where uh, just at Wilborn, um, we have mold issues at Wilborn. A city inspector went down there and had them to cut that wall out. Do you know we just had Wilborn built and we're dealing with these issues? Um, you know, I don't know if the contractors are using, what kind of materials they're using, but for that place just to be built and to have mold now is a concern. Um, also, um, you have residents not just from Hacker, you have residents in every other parts of the city. And I, I think somebody needs to address it. At this point, they would just want the residents to shut up and go away because um, hackers in this, uh, what is it, choice network, uh, cho I can't even remember what it is, but they're in, in the plan for a grant to come through. But while waiting for a grant, business still needs to take place. Residents are paying their rents and, and they need to have fair housing. And right now, a lot of them aren't living in fair housing and it's really bad. Um, a couple of weeks ago, we had a whole ceiling falling on a resident in her bedroom. Um, we having ceilings falling in. We having um, 
ceilings being leaked through, water leaked through. And, and what, what's been most disturbing in all this is, um, I'm gonna give credit for the city inspectors coming out, but um, they said give honor where honor's due, and I give them honor for now addressing it and coming out, but I have a problem when a city inspector comes out and tells a resident it's because you don't have a shower curtain that the, the ceiling underneath you is leaking like a, a torrential downpour. And then to double down on that in emails and say it's because you don't have a shower curtain. And we told them in the beginning it was a plumbing issue, but they didn't believe us to the fact that this resident got a lease violation for not having a shower and was gonna be made to pay for her floor in the ceiling that was leaked through. That is disturbing to me. And the chief inspector said, we investigated, and it is the shower. And that is so disturbing to me, because a shower couldn't cause all that. A shower couldn't cause all that problem. And, and I don't think they know to the extent of what this resident had to deal with, what a lease violation really entails. So for them to make a judgment, and then they said, we don't determine what the issue is. But they did, because they told her it was her shower curtain that caused that. I don't know what the solution is, but what I do know is everybody, no matter how much they make, no matter where they come from, should live in fair housing that's safe and that's not causing them health issues. Just Eastport, a whole group of tenants, a whole row of tenants, it was discovered that their units had lead in them. Direct result of not being inspected. We know those places were built before a certain time but the the uh, the agreement that the former former hacker executive had with the city staff member to not inspect further did these residents home damage and they're suffering right now from it. So I want to implore you to to help the residents because at, at this point they don't come because they don't believe nothing's going to be done. And I'm grateful to see all of these residents that showed up today to speak because they're tired and frankly i'm sick and tired with them so change looks like change looks like action because the truth is if nothing changes nothing changes and nothing has changed so we're here to get something to change thank you hello Someone. You can yeah state your name um, um, and address. I'm Heaven White. I live at uh, 930 President Street. I'm a current resident of Harbor House, and I lived in um, Eastport Terrace as well. I've been in a unit that I'm in for three years. I was moved from a unit that was so moldy that the walls were wet and they fell in on me, literally the walls and the ceiling fell in on me. I'm in this new unit now, and I um, think they've been out three times to clean up the mold, and it comes right back. But I'm here to speak on the mice infestation that's going on in public housing units. It's to the point where you can't even walk down the sidewalk because the mice are running across your, across your feet. I'm here to speak for Kay Hicks, who couldn't show up tonight, who sleeps in a chair in the middle of her living room holding her baby because mice run in her daughter's crib. I'm here to speak for Jay Somerville, who has so many mice in her unit, she had to be moved so that the mice could be taken care of. Guess what? I live right over top of her, and I'm waking up in the middle of the night because I hear mice running and squeaking in the walls. I live on the second floor around my window frame in the uh, first and second bedroom. You can hear the mice hitting up against the metal window sill. Um, this is not the first time that public housing has had this issue with the mice outside coming inside. You have residents who have baseball sized holes that have been chewed from the outside to the inside of their unit. The mice are running in six and seven mice on one trap. This is happening in homes of people may have up to three or four traps in their home with six mice on them. I don't understand how anybody can hear what's coming out of my mouth and not think that it's a problem and heard it out of other mouths 
and totally disregard it or the next person's gonna get to it, the next person gonna get to it, or we don't have money for this and we don't have money for that. It's not our fault how things are mishandled in public housing and all we get to do is come to these meetings, stand up and be teary-eyed because we're speaking on the living conditions. No one on this council or in City Hall, I bet not one of you will go home tonight and lay in your bed and hear mice digging around in the wall. It's not okay. I was not born in 1954, but that's when Jim Crow laws and segregation and everything came to an end. It didn't if you live in public housing. It did not. I, did, I can't, I'm, I know it's places that I can't go at because of the skin of my color and it's 2022. I know that um, there are other apartment complexes that was built at the same time by the same company that Eastport Terrace and Harbor House was built. Same time, same company, but not, not one of those residents are standing up here talking about mice and mold. I'm trying to figure out what's going on. I live on the other side of Annapolis. You know, it's that one Annapolis that we talk about. It's two Annapolises, I live on the other side. I live on the side where people gotta come and meet us and stand up here scared because you're not gonna know what's happening. You, he mentioned the retaliation. You know how many residents right now living in fear because they're scared to say something because they don't, this is it for us. This is it for us. The, the way you bought your home and you take care of it or wherever you run at, that's your space. That's your place you call it home. It's so many of us not settled and cannot call where we live at, where we pay bills and where we're raising our children home. Not when you're sharing it with mold and mice. Um, I wanna speak for Kay Perkins and N. Timmons, the residents of 1165, 11.55, 12.05, 12.15, 9.30, 9.40, 9.60, 950 and 960, where the entire building just needs to just, every person in the building needs to be moved. It's unfit, it's unhumane, and I have never, and never would have thought in a million years that for as much as I've done in my life and how hard I try to be a good person and how I put good people out in the world, my children, and keep them on a straight and narrow and try to do right, that where I live at is what's dragging me down. You gotta, our clock isn't working, but you. That's a good point to end it on. Thank you, have a good night. Thank you. Um, next, name, address. Uh, my name is Jordan Clinkscales. I live in 470A in Captain Circle. That's Admiral Oaks. Um, I've pretty much been dealing with water damage and mold since I've moved into the, the unit in 2019. Um, I've noticed right off bat, my first night there, we tried to shower. We were showering in literally a tub of water because our shower was clogged up. Um, I still have that problem now that it just get clogged, it gets clogged up regardless of what we use, a drain plug thing, whatever, it just automatically stops up. Um, I reported an issue where my ceiling began to leak and nothing was done about it until I had to, until my ceiling literally began to fall through and I had to go over to the office myself angrily because it fell on my kids, his walker toy when he was a baby. Um, they finally came in and they cut a ceiling in my, my uh, cut a hole in my ceiling, excuse me, um, and left me that way for about a half a year. Um, yes, I had a bag and it was literally just catching the water from the ceiling that was falling. Um, I had to get the city involved and um, they did get fined because of the reason or, and not doing my, their work in a timely manner. Um, after that was done, they literally didn't fix whatever the leak was. They patched my ceiling up with installation. Um, from there, I literally seen that the, I guess the installation was making the water spread into my entire ceiling. I um, addressed the issue many of times and mold came. 
I did have mold treatment and that was it. And it came right back. I literally had to keep emailing and calling and they had people come in. They had the maintenance come in and take pictures and no one came back to do anything about it. My unit was just condemned um, and deemed inha inhabitable for us to live in. We have mold coming out of our vents, our air vents. The mold started to literally take over everything. We have mold in our, in our carpet. I had to throw away um, a bunch of clothes, toys, anything that literally was left out um, in my household had to be tossed because everything grew mold on it. The cabinets, everything. Um, my son, he never, we all were pretty healthy. We had plenty of hospital visits, me and him. Um, he was diagnosed with asthma and put on a nebulizer and uh, um, asthma pump. Um, I had to go to um, hospital visit or have hospital visits for respiratory reason, uh, breathing problems and also mental health issues. Um, like I said, my house is condemned and they still, and I've been in the unit. I had to be placed into a, a hotel for about a week and a half um, when the unit that they wanted to place me in was ready. Uh, I had a city, um, someone from the city to come and inspect the house with me. The house failed inspection that they, do, that they were trying to move me into. Um, and I was placed back into a hotel for about another half a week to a week. Um, once I was able to move into the apartment, I realized that there was mold in that one too. Um, not as bad as my other unit, so I did stay there. I am still there currently. I just went back to my other unit. This is a temporary move, by the way. I went back to my other unit um, about a couple of days ago, and there has been no work done at all, at all. I literally see mold on our walls, on our floors. We had to get everything out of the, the unit, and for them to say that I have to go back into that, and they are just leaving it to, to mold on top of what has already had been done is, is unacceptable for me, and it's unfair to my family to have to go through this, not once, but twice, um, with the city having to be involved just to get something done in the properties. Um, we're tired. That's all I have to say. Um, I have a quick question, just as it relates to reimbursement. Re at where because you mentioned you had to throw away a number of things and you know kids toys etc were you reimbursed no i reported the issue to them i showed them all of the pictures and i took pictures of everything that i had to um throw out i never received any word about any type of reimbursement anything and what property i'm sorry because i'm this is admiral oaks. oaks okay yeah okay yeah yeah yeah, yeah. okay i have one question okay yeah please go ahead you mentioned um, they the maintenance or they're on site. There's a building that you go to for help. Is that? I don't think that there's a building for maintenance on site. Um, however, there is a emergency number that we are allowed to call that has been called. I've emailed. They've came in and took pictures themselves and haven't come back. They had m multiple um, contractors come in. And I'm guessing because there was a money issue or whatever, every contractor that came into my house said that they would need to tear into my walls. I've never seen none of them come back for anything. So it's an emergency number you call. There's nobody to go to, nobody no. there. No. Thank you. Thank you. I'm just trying to okay, enterprise. Okay. Um, enterprise, that's yeah. Oh, yeah. Next. If is anyone else up or please feel free to um, use the chairs along the wall there to get a system so we can, you know. Can you hear me? Mm -hmm. Good evening. Um, my name is Carletta Jackson. I live at um, 403 Secluded Post Circle in Glen Burnie, uh, Maryland. You... Four, 403 Secluded Post Circle in Glen Burnie, Maryland. But I'm here. Um, on behalf of my daughter, Shalia Allen, that lives in the Wilburn, Wilburn Estates. Um, she just moved there in June of this year. Um, maybe, I think it was like three weeks ago, um, we had went shopping and then it was on a Sunday, we come back to her home 
And as we coming up the steps, she lives in a townhome. You see water coming from the ceiling, from one side of the ceiling to the other side of the ceiling coming down the wall were bubbles in the ceiling. I have a four-year-old granddaughter that just started preschool. And I could not allow her to stay there that night because I wasn't for sure whether or not if the ceiling was going to cave in on them or what was going to happen. So she called the maintenance person. He did come out. He had no clue what was going on. So that Monday, no, it wasn't that Monday, it was that Tuesday, him, the maintenance person, and another person came out. They went upstairs, came back downstairs, and said, oh, oh, we don't know where this came from. We, we don't know where it's coming from. Well, I have a problem with that. Evidently, it has to be in the walls. It's pipes or something leaking. It is just, uh, I mean, I actually have videos of it if you want to see it. But it just doesn't make sense to me. That's been three weeks ago. Nobody had never con have con have not contacted her. Nobody hasn't been, you know, no writing. No, oh, we're gonna come back to your place and maybe paint over, paint over it like they do everything else. I had to contact Miss Tony Pratt to get some help because I had I live in Glen Burnie. I had no clue, but I know that she get things done. If anybody in here wants, everybody in here should know that if you need anything done contact Ms. Pratt because she gets it done. In fact, she needs to be sitting in one of these chairs up here. I'm just being honest because sometimes people are in positions and you don't even see them come out in the community to do absolutely nothing but to get a paycheck. I work for an elected official. I know what it's like, but it doesn't make sense. And this is not a threat and it's not a, it's not a threat and I'm not here to be sarcastic or, or, be, or be, be vindictive, but it, 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 it angers me that I'm so afraid that if my daughter and my granddaughter is sitting in the living room and the ceiling collapse, somebody gonna pay for it. And the news will know. I can't believe that's happening in the new place. Um, you can share, if you want to share your um, images with us, you can do so through our city clerk's office. Um, you can, yeah, if you wanna share your video with us, you can send it to our city clerk. Um, you just go to um, the city webpage. It'll say government at the top. Have city council drop down, and all our contact is right there. Hi. Absolutely. Thank you, no, thank you. Hello. Hi. How y'all doing? Hello. My name is Martha Holly. I used to live at 1131 Duck Street, Annapolis, Maryland. I lived there for seven years along with my five beautiful kids. <laughs> That's real. You got to people that are busting the team the energy of time going on. That's real emotion, frustration, kids, all that We can't, we can't do the, from the stands. We can't do that. I understand. I know, but. Y'all Miss White. Thank you. So, is it okay if I speak on her behalf? Okay, her name is Martha Holland. She resides at 166 Obrey Court. She was moved out of her unit because her unit was found to have lead. This is one of the members who was moved out of Eastport. She lived at 1131 Frederick Douglas Street because her unit had lead. Her children are dealing with health issues. They have been um, screened and they don't have lead, thank God. But who knows how long that family had to be living in lead. And again, I say, with the city and the former uh, hacker director making an agreement to stop inspections did not make it any better. Um, I, probably can, I, I probably can say with great certainty that maybe all those units have led because of when they were built. Um, so Ms. Holland has something written for you guys. She says, hello, my name is Martha Holland, and I used to live at 1131 Frederick Dulwich Street in Annapolis, Maryland. I lived in this address for seven years, along with my five beautiful children. Throughout the stay, my third child had medical problems and was in and out of the hospital with sickness. 
Also, I would like to share that out of my five children, three of which have IEPs where they attend school, my children have been identified with some form of learning disability. I received a letter from Housing Authority sometime in February of 2021 explaining that I had to relocate. This was man a mandatory move. The letter explained that I had lead testing done throughout my town home and due to the high levels of lead, we were forced out of our home and had to relocate. These aren't isolated incidents. This is what's going on in our city, the state's capital. This should not be happening. I should not have to organize residents to have a voice to not be afraid that they're going to be retaliated against just because they want to live in safe housing. This is a travesty of justice here. This is an equity issue. And whether or not Hacker is getting money when they're getting, they still have to accommodate their residents. I will fight hard to help them put their rents in escrow if they need to until this gets addressed. Because this, this is not right. It is not right. When I go home, I'm going to go to sleep in a unit that doesn't have mice, that doesn't have mold. And sometimes I can't sleep because guess what? I represent people who are going home who has to sleep in those conditions. So it's not about them. It's about me and it's about each one of you sitting up there. Because guess what? Tomorrow it might be us and we will want something to do. So please, we're begging you. Only reason we're here, do something. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, did, will, our next speaker. Good evening, you? everyone. How are you? I'm well. Um, My name is Tanya okay. Cooper Johnson. I live at 8163 Kramer Court in Glen Burnie, Maryland. I'm also the founder of Weeping Mothers Incorporated, which is a um, Homicide First res Responder nonprofit um, established in Annapolis. My son was killed there in 2007. I came to speak because I do support the Annapolis community, moved to Annapolis in 1971, and still do things in the Annapolis community. I'm also here to speak to let the residents know that it's not just the Annapolis city area, it's also in Glen Burnie and around the county. I'm going through mold with my um, complex village square townhouses and apartments owned by Morgan Properties to the point where the stench is so bad that I can't stay there. And so what they offered me a transfer, then they rescinded the transfer yesterday saying that where they were transferring me to, they couldn't uh, come into agreement that I would pay the same rent. I've had the county, I've had the um, health department, um, I'm in contact with several people of um, the county executive's office, um, ACDS. And it's a sad, it's past Annapolis. It's Anne Arundel County, it's management. And I know it may not be much that the city of Annapolis can do, but I'm just here to share to let them know that you're not alone. You're not alone. Um, I've gone through homelessness when I was going through a divorce with five kids, but I'm now 65, and I don't like being displaced. You know, like, it's real. And I'm not sure how far this is going to go, but what I will share with you, when I leave here tonight, I don't know where I'm staying. And I work. I'm a teacher. I'm never late on my rent. And I don't care if my rent was a dollar or what it is now, $1,600. I don't deserve to live like that. I've been dealing with them for a year, and now it's worse. It's taken over my possessions. You have rental insurance that, and I'm just calling names nationwide. Don't know if uh, my rental insurance I've been playing for years is going to cover it because it's small. They sent somebody out. My foundation is leaking. Something has to be done, and somebody has to set a precedent, and it has to start somewhere to let these management companies know that we are people. We are human. But for us paying our bills, they wouldn't have a salary. 
and they wouldn't have a company to run on. So what do we do? What do we do? We can't continue to live like this. I mean, it's, um, it's really horrible when you look at Anne Arundel County and they, and even the city of Annapolis, then they glorify downtown and they glorify the Naval Academy. And you have communities like Robertwood, Harbor House, Eastport Church, Bloomsbury Square, the new community that they just built where we live. I grew up in Robertwood. And those communities, however you want to say it, are designed as one way in and one way out. For those who are who kind of like got out, but still pour back in, we're going through the same thing. Something has to be done. I'm not sure who's going to see this recording, but for me and the community and me and my house, it's not going to stop here. They rescinded my transfer because of the rental difference from where they were sending me. You didn't even ask if I could pay it. But you know I just signed a year lease. So how can you go up on me? You can't, by law. And they've been violated me in so many ways. We are violated. And I stand not to, just to represent myself and the county, but to represent, represent those in the city who don't want to have a voice or are afraid to speak. I'll speak for them. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, next, uh, we'll move on to our next speaker. Uh, name and address. My name is Ivory Hatcher and I live 701 Newtown. Uh, you said 701? Yes. Okay. I stay in, back in April. Uh, they renovated because it was infestation and mold. So they started a renovation in April and it was from four to six weeks, but it lasted up to four months. Me and my two children was in a one bedroom suite. And now that we're finally back home, uh, the, the new renovation, this, my tub leaks when I fills it up and it leaks into the neighbor's apartment downstairs. They came and they told me it was because I didn't have a shower curtain up. So to avoid all that, I put a shower curtain up. The, they sent a city inspector out. She was very unprofessional, asking questions, who doesn't have a shower curtain and things like that. And they said that since I didn't have a shower curtain, I took a shower and water went all over the place and leaked downstairs which was untrue. And I have a paper trail of it. Uh, it was a man from the city in the email, Mr. John Manassas, that was what he wrote in the email saying that they finished everything and they were charging me for the floor and I had a lease violation. Every time I go home, my eyes are itching my asthma's acting up. I'm laying in the bed taking my inhaler all day and I asked them could I have a report from what needed to be fixed from the renovation. They told me I had to ask the rental office. The rental office told me I had to ask the city inspector. So when the city inspector came out recently about the drainage problem, she told me what it was, but I didn't understand what was going on. So I asked her for it in writing. I still haven't received that. I called to make a complaint against Mr. John Manassas and the lady that I spoke with, she just was, the way that it got, that I took it was like, do you know who he is? Like she really didn't want to talk with me. She transferred me to his assistant and the assistant had a voicemail that said she was only working remotely, so email her. I did that and no one has still reached out to me. and. Now, because of everything that's going on, they're not even notifying me anymore. They don't notify me at all. Everyone else knows what's going on, but I don't. So you're supposed to have 24 hours or 48 hours before they come into your unit. They're just popping up every day. 
and I asked them, could they let me know? Because my neighbor's telling me everything that's going on, but they won't tell me. So I asked them, don't go in without me there anymore since I'm being lied on. And ever since I asked that, uh, I haven't been getting a response back from them. They won't call me. And right now, I just... Yeah. Who is who is that person? Is what you're referring to now? Yeah, the, 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 the property manager. The property the, manager won't call you back. Yeah, she won't call me. She won't call me back because she called me and told me that she got a plumber to come, and I told her I wasn't home. I'll be home in 15 to 20 minutes. And I texted and told her. I, I called her when I got home. She went and answered the phone. Her phone that she gave me the number to or the phone in the office. So I texted and told her I was home. She said, "Well, the plumber is gone." So she texted me back there and I tried to call her. And when I went over to the rental office this morning, like they said she wasn't there. What, what, so, what property is this? I'm sorry. Woodside Garden. Okay. Yeah, 701 Newtown, Woodside Garden. They're under new management now, aren't they? Yes, and they just, re my apartment, my building is one of the newly renovated buildings. And when we were in meetings, when it was getting renovated, I asked, was it a mold problem? They told me yes. And they told me, you shouldn't be worried about the mold. But I have a child with behavioral issues, with an IEP, 504 plan, and none of these things happen until we move to Annapolis. He has asthma, he stays sick. And since I've been home, I've been sick. And every time that I'm talking to him now, and it's just like I'm being brushed off. If you could um, leave your email, you know, uh, all the city staff here will make sure that uh, someone from Planning and Zoning is in touch first thing tomorrow. Uh, Planning and Zoning, that's Mr. That's, John Manassas. That. Yep, yep, we'll get that figured out, your complaint issue. All of that will be addressed. Um, and if you'd like, we can, you know, obviously assist in, in escalating or, 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 or helping you get a solution, really. Um, I feel horrible because nobody's reached back out to you. So, um, yeah, leave your email. If you, I, I think there's um, paper in the back. If possible, leave your email um, and pen, um, and we'll yeah, have and, and your cell as well, so that somebody can call you tomorrow. I think. All right. Uh, I guess you have a question. I'm well, sorry. I guess by a show of hands, I guess how many are living in a condemned unit right now? But her unit is condemned. Your unit's condemned, yeah. But no one's living in a condemned unit, right? We've been in the unit for a month now, and nothing has been done in the unit. And the, the unit that I'm actually in, we're still there. And and I heard Tony say you're all you're all paying rent, or pretty much. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, everybody's. We also have another lady from Ava Oaks whose um, unit was condemned and. She's been in the hotel, I know, for the excess of four weeks. She's still in the hotel. Uh, okay, let's get to that But because the TV crew can't hear, so they're going to tell us to get on the mics. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry about that. I don't mean to cut you off, but yeah. Good evening. My name is Consuelo Pack. I um, would say that I'm now homeless, but formerly of the 700 block of Newtown Drive. Okay, perfect. Um, so I will need that retaliation number that you were talking about. Um, at Newtown Drive, I would say probably a resident. My mom was a resident for at least 45 years. Um, she's never been laid on rent. I have rental receipts from 1983. Um, never been laid on rent, kept in immaculate place. Um, she had fell ill, so I had to give up my home and move in with her to take care of her. I did, went through everything I had to do, filling out a lease. Um, Never could get, once I filled out a lease, the manager at said time, he left the property. Like it was a Friday, he told me I could come back that Monday to get the copy of the lease. Came back that Monday, he was gone. They couldn't give me a copy of the lease. Um, each and every month they would call me for documentation, um, you know, my mom's bank statement for this and that, um, you know, asking me that if I went to school, um, but they never would give me a copy of the lease. Even through email, I have an email. I've sent you several emails to no avail, and I still haven't gotten a copy of the lease. Still paying my month, I mean rent every month on time, no copy of the lease. My mom passes away. 
they tell me I have to leave the place. I think it was like 30 days, but they still couldn't, wouldn't give me a copy of the lease. They couldn't give me a copy of the lease with my name on it, but they sure couldn't give me a copy without my name on it. Nevertheless, um, you know, I'm like vocal. I constantly call to the office to complain about things like the drug deals, um, you having to walk over people to get in your building, um, you know, just different things. You know, people like really laying out, you would think they were deceased, but they're on drugs and, you know, just laying in the middle of the steps. So I'm constantly calling to the office. I could probably say, I wrote a, um, what is it, a review on the website. Um, and I, I know they probably got tired of me being vocal. I went to a couple of meetings at the city police department um, about the security issues. I've been to two meetings. I made the one meeting at American Legion um, that the community had. And I was at work, but I'm, you know, if my presence or just me saying anything would make a difference, I'm going to be there. Like, I'm supposed to be at work now, but I switched shifts just so I could make this meeting. Um, nevertheless, I was evicted, wrongfully evicted. Um, and I just want to say it's like um, the neighborhood probably have like at least eight managers. And that's like saying it lightly, at least eight managers probably within a year if, you know, if I'm, you know, staying corrected. Um, so it's always, you can never really talk to anybody. Once you talk to somebody, it's, they always putting you off to the next person. And like the, a few people I heard them say, they were talking about mold. They were talking about mice. They were talking about lead. I'm going to talk about asbestos. I know that there's asbestos in the building. Asbestos causes cancer. I could tell you in one building, one building alone, I know four to five people that had died of cancer. And I'm sure it's because of asbestos in the building. I reached out to the health department. They told me because it wasn't mold, I think in lead, because it was asbestos, I would have to reach out. I guess that was the state level. I might have to reach out to the government level. Um, you know, the man did give me a number, but I know that the buildings are infested with mold and asbestos. And, um, you know, something that has to be done. Um, security isn't doing anything to protect the residents from all the drug deals. Um, you know, people constantly being disrespected. I saw, you know, a young man selling drugs by an elderly woman's daughter, my mom's neighbor. And I mean, my mom's neighbor and I asked him, you know, could you please, and I said it like this, could you please move from right there doing that? He looked at me and says, I, I live here, you don't live here. He didn't. But he looked at me and said, I live here, you don't live here. And that was it. Just continue to sell the drugs. This is Woodside Gardens? This is Woodside well. Gardens. The building, seven zero four. Okay, and um, would you, if, yeah, if you leave your email as well, and get you back to some services? Yes, sir. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, sir. Um, it might not be me. I'll pass it to Sheila, who's your representative, but we'll keep that communication going just so that, yeah. Oh, I did speak with um, Mrs. Finlayson. Mm -hmm. Actually, I met her at one of the meetings at the police department, um, and I have speaking, spoken to her since I've gotten evicted. Um, but she pretty, pretty much, I don't know, it's not anything she could do. She told me to go to the court um, and like file something against the landlord. I go to the court, they tell me, go to the commissioner, go to the commission, they tell me go to the police department. It's like a bunch of back and forth, so I don't know really where to go and what to do. Okay. Um, well then, I'll follow up, um, you know, with our staff and figure out what's the best, you know, step forward then. Could you just, uh, um, the asbestos that you mentioned, are those like exposed fibers? Are they, are they visible, is the asbestos or? No, of course, it's not exposed, but I know it's asbestos okay. in the buildings. Um, the men that are renovating, it's Whitey and Turner, the contractors, they've spoken on it. How's asbestos and mold 
Whiting Fest, Turner. yes. Whiting Turner is doing work at Woodside. Whiting and Turner is doing the renovations at Woodside, yes. They're, 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 they're a good contract. Oh yeah, they that's, are. That's the only good thing I heard tonight was yeah. that they're, they, they're, they are a good contractor. They are. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, I'm Alicia Jenkins. I live in 100 block of Bertina, Nick Way, Penrose Community, Oberry Court. Um, I've been there since 2014, seven years. In 2016, I discovered mold growing in my bathroom. It took them until 2020 before they covered it up with primer and it came back again about four months ago. Um, it's over your court. I'm sorry, what? It's over your court, but what is the. Um, Penrose. Okay. Sorry. So I've had two leaks in my bathroom, one in my kitchen. They cut a hole in my ceiling in the bathroom, left the hole there for three days. They came, covered it. My paint was discolored because I had new paint and I still had the old paint. So that was this color, but now it's like a gold ring around where they cut out at. Um, I had a window flood. It started three years ago, so it was just like a minor flood. It was just coming a little bit to where as though fast forward to three months ago, now it's flooding to my carpet. I had to call Tony Pratt just for her to help me communicate with the city to get them to fix it. Well, they came out, got contractors to fix it. The contractor that fixed it only had one arm. Um, he fixed it. You can still see water bubbles in my window seal. Um, it's still like a gold spot where the mold was. So I don't know if it's reoccurring or that's just how they fixed it. Um, I called them about it. They came out, looked at it, and told me to keep an eye on it. I have mold growing outside of my window. It looks like grass in my window behind my screen. That's how bad it is. My neighbors have steps. Their steps are molded. Concrete out front of my door, all of that is molded. The grass is molded. Um, I have cracks in my ceiling. You'll call them, they won't answer. They'll tell you to come on certain days, they still won't answer the door. I've sent emails. Um, I've been there seven years and I think they've had about six property managers. 2018, they took the whole community to court almost the whole community to court for everybody on over $10,000 in back pay of rent. It was thrown out because they didn't have a renter's license. So the lawyer told the judge that they weren't gonna take it off of our accounts until we paid it. But come find out, not only did it hurt my credit, cause they had me on there for $10,000. When the property manager came, it wasn't a property manager, it was like the head people from their corporate came down and I told them my situation. She gave me a ledger. When I'm looking over this ledger, the whole time they were charging me late fees when I was paying my rent on time. So it took five years before they got that off of my account. So in the midst of that, I couldn't move anywhere because my credit was bad. So I kept getting denied. That's it, that's my story. And she got a small child. Oh yeah, well, thank you. Two years before my son was born, that's how I got complaint. I mean, I was complaining about the mold in my bathroom. So I called the city, told them I was pregnant. They fixed that. He was born 2020. 
from 2021 in December to last June, he's had a cough that he just couldn't get off. So now he's on a nebulizer. They haven't changed these unit, I mean, they haven't cleaned these unit vents since I've been there. I've been there seven years, I haven't got fresh paint. I've been there seven years, I haven't got new tile waxed or scrubbed. My tile looked like, you could say, mold is growing in the corners of those too. So it's like, they put you in these units, they fix whatever's broken, but the foundation that stays there and stays damaged. To our, our next um, speakers, can we just get a good estimate of what, how much we got going on, so that we can? Um, how many speakers left? We just want to make sure we're on. We're, we're, we just want to make sure we're on. Um, you know, on, on board with everything, and, and have discussion with you all afterwards. That's important. So. Hey, I'm Taylor DeJesus. I live at 1185 Madison. Um, I have mold in my bathroom. I can't cook on a stove when it rains because I got a hole in my ceiling. <laughs> um, I got two cats. One of them got a real bad respiratory infection from the mold, which I have vet papers stating that he is sick. Um, and now, I'm having a serious problem with mice. I've caught maybe seven mice since Friday. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank God for the cats because it's too much. Like, I done called, I done called. They keep saying they gonna send somebody out. The ceiling been like that for maybe four years. Um, when it rained, my living room flood, cause my back door don't have a, um, what is it? The thing under it. Okay, yeah. So everything in my living room be basically wet if it's sitting on the floor. Um, it's just a mess. My apartment is a mess. They haven't came out to fix nothing. You call, they don't respond. I've been complaining about the mice situation. I can't live with mice. It's to the point we and they're living together and it's uncomfortable. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. And um, my son, he's eight. He does have sickle cell. So the mold does play a big part. And that's really it for real. Have they, I do have a quick question. Have you had, um, you, see the, you said the contractor have not been to the facility yet, or, or have they or already? They send out like, uh, in, um, what do you call the people that do? Pest control? No, uh, nobody's uh, been out. And, uh, what is that called? No, but what's their title? Exterminator. Yeah, 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 yeah. No. no? Okay, okay. They spraying for bugs, but. Yeah, this is more like mice, yeah, right, yeah, okay, okay. I don't have bugs in my house. I've never did. You have just the issue with that, okay. Yeah, I've never had roaches, no ants, no nothing. This my situation has literally just occurred maybe like two months ago, but it's like out of control now. It's like half the time I don't even want to stay home. <clears throat> Do you have any? Okay. Um Leave your email as well in the back and we'll All right. just jumpstart the process. And I, I say that for everybody as well. Leave your emails in the back with your, you know, name, address, and cell. We've got a list of, you know, issues that, you know, you've discussed. And um, I think, uh, you know, us as, as, as the legislators, the, the thing that we can do, obviously, is just kind of help facilitate the, the solution process. Um, I'll get into the legislation and all the uh, other stuff later, but you know, for right now, the media changes. Put your um, email there. You can um, you can go ahead.
Hi, my name is William. My name is William Pratt. I live 32 Juliana Circle East. Um, man, I just don't even know where to start, but I, I believe I'll start right here with thanking you, uh, Alderman Gay and Alderman Tyranny, for uh, being here tonight and, and hearing these voices. Um, my heart really bleeds for what I call my family. Um, knowing the, the relationship that my wife Tony has with them and the work she does because she cares so much. And then I come to uh, city council meetings where all of these seats are filled. All of these seats are filled with representatives, all the women, the mayor, the clerks, everyone, when it's concerns about downtown Annapolis and other areas of Annapolis. Where are they at tonight? I mean, it really shows what's really important and what's high on the priority list and what's really low on the priority list. I don't throw the full responsibility on the city, but from the time my wife Tony spends dealing with calls with Annapolis City to get responses, I know for sure everyone on this council knows about the mold, the lead, the infestations, the evictions. We know about it, but do we care about it? That's my concern. This hasn't been an overnight issue. My, my question and my concern is, we can put sanctions and penalties and fines on certain areas that we call one Annapolis, which we know is far from one Annapolis. We can put penalties, fines, and sanctions on everywhere else in Annapolis who don't follow the guidelines, but we have a problem addressing management and owners and low income and housing that has issues. When are we gonna step up and do our part? If we really want this to become one Annapolis, we need to start making it look like one Annapolis. Even if, even if we couldn't come up with any solutions tonight, it would have did my heart some great pleasure to see the mayor take out some time and come and just sit in and listen. It would do my heart some great deal to see the alderwoman of Ward 4, who most of this area represents. It would do my heart some great pleasure to see her just sitting in here tonight and to absorb some of this, what we're hearing and what we feel. I know it's not an overnight fix, but man, we need to do something and do something quick. Or some people could be dishing out a whole lot of money for lawsuits. And it really doesn't have to get to that point. All we have to do is start with have a, having a concerned heart and showing up like we show up for everything else in the city. Thank you. We have any more sp <clears throat> speakers? Awesome woman, okay. Good evening. My name is Curtis Jones. I know I was here last night. And again, I don't live in the city of Annapolis. I can't vote for anybody in the city of Annapolis. I can't vote for the mayor. But I do come here every day and I'm at the American Legion. And a lot of these people in this room, a lot of people that live in Ward 4, Ward whatever, in the city of Annapolis, they come to the American Legion. I listen to them. I hear their cries, I hear their pleas, and I say, it can't be that bad. But I listen anyway. And I have another friend who grew up in the city of Annapolis. He did surveys this summer 
down at the Harbor House. He told me a story about a lady who had so many mice in her house that they were running out of the house. She went into her bedroom where the child was, and she found a two-year-old baby playing with a dead mouse in a crib. And I'm like, you gotta be kidding me. In this day and age, there's gotta be something that can be done. And the capital of the state of Maryland, with a population less than 200,000 people, you're gonna tell me that you can't figure out and being you as a general term, that it cannot be figured out how to help Hacker get his act together and the city get their act together. Because I can't just blame it on Hacker. I've been here since 1996. And I came here as an active duty Marine. And I've heard the same things over and over and over again. So that people would tell me, when you do the same thing over and over again, that's definition of being crazy. And I tell people, well, you know, after 21 years in the Marine Corps and what I've been through, they tell me I'm crazy. I say, no, I have issues. The system isn't broken. People that work within the system are broken. And it's high time that those people were dealt with in a serious manner. It's no longer time for you to cow cow to any individual when you have people suffering. And one thing that I neglected to say last night, but I will say tonight, is that a lot of people assume, which is a bad thing to do, that the majority of people in low-income housing, subsidized housing, or Section 8 are people of color, which is not true. The majority of people in those type of housing units are white, but you don't know that because you don't hear those complaints. So you like, it's per capita. It's the other way around. But you just don't know that. Their complaints are, are heard and dealt with. But when the complaints are people of color, and I'm just saying black, I'm saying color as a spectrum, they get in the street, they have to become more vocal, and then it's, oh, are they out there protesting again? No, they never stop protesting. It's just that some people get tired of protesting. And it's other people like myself, the Pratts, to speak for the downtrodden, for those that can no longer speak for themselves because they feel they're not heard anymore. Well, it's time out for that. We, as a people, must take care of our people. I fought for this country, for all the council people that sit in the room in those chairs last night so they could sit in those chairs. So you could go out and get that vote. So let's help those that help you get to where you're at. It's just a crying shame that people have to live in rat infested, mouse infested mold. You got a third world country right here in your own backyard. And I've been to third world countries. And I'm gonna tell you, some of them are better than we're, what you have right here. And that's a crying shame. That's all I have to say. Just chew on that for a while. And thank you. Thank you so much. Um, any more public testimony? Anybody? I am seeing none. We're gonna make a motion to close public testimony. I move that we close public testimony. I'll second that. All in favor? Uh, aye. Aye. Um, 
we'll move on to the next item on our agenda. Let's just spend some time just deliberating quickly. Um, as this is probably one of the toughest uh, uh, public hearings that I've been a part of in my three years of been on the council. Um, obviously, and I always say, I think um, for me, is 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 incredibly difficult growing up in these communities, living, having family and friends that live in these communities um, that I still associate with daily, um, and and you know, not being able to provide the immediate assistance that you that you all desperately need. Um, I guess the, the, the first thing I'll say, um, as I mentioned, please leave your contact information. I'll be in touch with you directly. We'll start the process to follow up on everything with constituent services. Um, some of you ex had issues that we've taken note of that will require extensive um, follow-ups and we'll do that as well. As I mentioned to you as well, we ha are, are, have invited the property managers to join us on um, Thursday, September the 29th at six o'clock. That will, uh, it's, a, it's a special meeting of the Housing Human Welfare Committee. So this group, uh, Alderman Shandemeyer will be there as well. Um, we'll have members from the Planning Commission, Planning and Zoning, um, and, and the general planning staff uh, are present as well as well as the uh, Housing and Community Equity Development Commission members. Um, that'll be an opportunity for full discussion, uh, all related to affordable work or slash workforce housing um, uh, in, in the city and the solutions in, that we're trying to put into place. Um, I say all that to say, you know, we, the, the city council um, and our committees, we have subpoena powers. I'm betting almost for certain that we will have to exercise those powers. And it'll be the first time that I would have had to do so as a chair to have the property management come forward um, from all communities. Um, to be clear, I think we've heard from Oberry Court, Enterprise, um, and of course, Hacker. Is that it? Uh, we heard from pretty much a, a, an array of uh, Admiral Oaks. Um, which is enterprise enterprise okay will burn estates uh which is hacker um or is it primrose part, part, is it is it oh yeah yeah it, it is primrose yeah no no penrose penrose yeah yeah yeah. and i think that oberry as well right mm -hmm. um oberry is i think so yeah so enterprise penrose um, um woodside gardens multiple times which is uh, who is it this month <laughs> Um, and Madison. You said Fairstead? Yes. Okay, because that's not popping up on anything. Okay, Fairstead. So, um. Fairstead. S-T-A-D. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. Awesome. awesome. So we'll, um, we'll get that out. Some of you expressed concerns with, um, you know, housing and rental problems. Uh, one of the things that we've worked on, um, and it'll be available um, at the beginning of October is our um, rental, uh, rental assistance, energy assistance, and um, social uh, secure, uh, security deposit assistance. So um, that's one of the things uh, that we have in the pipe works. Um, I worked with our state senator and, and the delegation and all that stuff. We carved out 3% of the uh, property tax. So every year that fund will be uh, replenished. We thought that was just important because obviously, as, as you all know, you probably have had to deal with some of these nonprofit organizations that run and, and have access to the funding that you need for assistance and it's difficult and they're usually um, significant waiting periods. The idea and the hope is that with this city run fund, um, you know, it'll be available quicker. Um, and I think the more important thing is, is as some of you mentioned is trying to move and not having access to that funding and, you know, the security deposit assistance is a significant step. Uh, you know, I understand the, the strife of that. Um, we also have 04022 in the works, um, which is directly related to um, changing the zoning code for affordable housing in the city of Atlanta. I'm going over all the long-term stuff and then I'll get to the tangible stuff um, ASAP. The 04022 is in the works, which will, you know, create the new zoning uh, language as it relates to a workforce and affordable housing. Um, that at the uh, 
October the 29th meeting, uh, we're, we'll be putting together the final amendments for that. I think this testimony was so important um, for my colleagues to hear, and, and hopefully my other colleagues will, um, you know, play back the tape. But just to hear this, and, and, and it underlines the importance for, for the need for immediate construction for affordable housing in the city of Annapolis, which has been um, extremely difficult to um, access and put those things forward. Obviously, you all know if you live in Hakka about the Choice Neighborhood um, a grant that a hacker received. So the way that that works, just so just for clarity, and they had a meeting tonight, and, I, and I'll catch up on that. But they're in a planning phase right now, which I think was about five hundred thousand uh, um, dollars. No more than that. Yeah. So and, and that was in partnership with the city, Hacker, and um, I believe HUD, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Um, Choice neighborhoods. Yeah, we've all contributed to that. They're in the planning phase. They have work groups um, that meet frequently. And this is specifically for Eastport Terrace and Harbor House. The next phase in that process is, you know, when they go to meet with HUD, I, I think she explained to us, it's coming up soon, I think she mentioned in our meeting. Yeah, before the end of the month, I think. Okay. And, and, and if selected out of that, then you obviously are open up to more funds. I'm talking $50 million dollars and you know, redevelopment funds that we would desperately need. Um, again, that's long term because you know, shovel wouldn't be in the ground for another year or year and a half, but maybe even a little longer. I don't wanna, you know, anyone to leave out of here with definites for me. Um, but that's something that's in the, in, in the progress as well. All long term, what you all stated tonight are all immediate fixes. Like I said, we're gonna have to work and be in constant communication over the next couple of weeks to try to get um, some of these uh, concerns ad addressed, um, some of them s more uh, easier than others. Um, I'm aware of the 124 vacancies um, across um, the hack of properties. Um, the issue with the vacancies and the transfers, as she explained to us last week, um, are the unit turnovers. They're saying it's $6,000 a unit. They don't have access to that funding right now. Um, I'm going to work with our state partners and my colleagues as well uh, to, you know, try to get access to any capital that the city has or even the state has uh, to be able to put, you know, put that to good use um, with Hacker to help speed up some of this process because that's the biggest thing is making sure. I think one of one of the uh, women here mentioned she got transferred from one bad unit to another bad unit. It doesn't make any sense. And so we just got to get access to this funding quickly um, to help you all out with that. I'll share this public testimony with our state partners as well. Um, please, please, please leave emails. If there's any other communications or um, assistance that you all need immediately, let me know before you leave out tonight and we'll start um, that process. But you'll hear from me uh, regardless within the next 72 hours, just you know, getting everything, the ball rolling. Um, I feel like I'm missing something. Uh, I think you said a lot. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. The most but important thing is is the um, getting it, the management companies in front. Exactly, of us. exactly. And um, you know, would it, that include Hacker? It would. But, it would. Yeah. Yeah. Even though you know, obviously they've let us know of their 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 um of of their financial state, but I think the issue that you all expressed, and I and I'll be upfront and honest about this. It is, and I don't want to get anybody in trouble or get myself in trouble, it's the property management, period. And you've all ex have expressed that. I don't think it does us any good really to have Melissa here again. We know her plan. We know the uh, $500,000 in backlogs and we know all of that. We just need to be able to hear from property management. That's one thing we have not had an opportunity to do. And partly because as, as you all mentioned, they've had eight. Um, on numerous properties in, in the last couple of years. And so all of that will be followed up on. I don't want anybody to leave out of here thinking, oh my God, I just gave this testimony for nothing. I, I genuinely care about each and every single last one of these communities in, in the city of Annapolis. Um, I, I, Ellie can tell you, I probably get on their damn nerves every day of <laughs> talking about housing and these issues that we have going on. And so, um, that's why I thought it was important to hold this public hearing just so that you all can have a, a platform to share those concerns. 
we'll follow up on it. Um, I, I'll make sure, you know, every, everything is worked out. I'm taking on the burden and I know that's a, a big deal, but um, we'll get this done. I appreciate each and every one of you giving testimony tonight. Yeah, of course. Absolutely. Please. Um, yeah. I, a couple of things. I, as far as the, the management, I, you know, you talk about one Annapolis, you know, I live in ward one, I live in a condo and the management company, I mean, they'll, they'll tell you if somebody's making noise next door, you know, um, they'll, and I don't, but what I want to say is, um, this destroys lives. Um, and, and as a mother, um, regardless of who's at fault and all that, but to your children will remember this, unfortunately. I mean, I know, you know, Dwan and, and Shanika talk about their days living in affordable housing and, but what, what, are, what are these children gonna remember and what damage, this is cyclical and we have not broken the cycle. Um, I mean, if, we, if people can't see that, listening to what you're having to say tonight, there's something wrong. I mean, this is, this is, this is our future. These, your kids, you, your well-being, your contribution to the city um, is just totally destroyed if you don't get the help that you need. But it is cyclical in, in Annapolis. It is cyclical, and it's a, and it's our. You know. We we. we Got to follow through. We Got to follow go. through. Thank you all for coming out and go home to your. Thank you. Thank you. Any um, further business before the no. committee? <laughs> Motion that we adjourn. I'll second that. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Meetings adjourned.